Portland is the 18th team in Major League Soccer. It's the city of Portland's championship. It is great to be home. Sports Sunday with Orlando Sanchez. What's good, everyone? I'm Art Edwards. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight. Orlando is taking the weekend off. All those weeks I was off probably wore them out. But I didn't want to do this show alone. Fortunately, we didn't have to go very far at all for help because Brittany Falkers is in the studio. Hey, hey, Brittany, how you doing? Hey, Art, it is so good to be back. Yeah, I'm definitely not Orlando Sanchez, but I'm going to bring that <laughs> Orlando energy. I'm ready. I'm pumped up. Let's do this. Oh, I love it. I'm ready to go. Hey, here's what we've got coming up tonight. The college basketball season hasn't even been over for a full week, but we've got roster turnover. The big names leaving the Ducks and the Beavers through the transfer, transfer portal. Plus, Alice Rodriguez, he looks to make the jump from player to owner, but he's not going after a baseball team this time. And we had fans in the stands for the Thorns home opener. Those folks went home happy. But you know what? We've got to start tonight with the Portland Trailblazers playing the second night of a back-to-back. -back. The Miami Heat visiting the Moda Center tonight. The Blazers started this one off horribly. Three straight turnovers. That one led to the basket, and then they finally got on track. They did shoot 63% from the field, and they took a six-point lead into the second quarter. And as Canner doing that work that he always does in the second quarter, he is the only Blazer to play every game this season. But you know what? The Blazers really just couldn't keep it going. The lead evaporated in the second quarter. Blazers turned the ball over 12 times in the first half. No turnovers for Miami. Porting them down 56-48 to the half. Miami extended the lead at the start of the third quarter. Basically, that was it. But this is a physical game. Look at this one right here. Ennis Kempton gets nailed, and he goes down, hitting the head in the third quarter. He'd be okay. He did come back in the game. Miami extended the lead to 18 points after three quarters. Bright spot. Look at that guy, Norman Powell. He was one bright spot for the Blazers. He and C.J. McCollum led Portland with 17 points. The Blazers fall to Miami 107-98, to the final. Oh, and it's really too bad the Blazers had to play again tonight. Rip City denied the chance to really geek out over Cantor's game against the Pistons last night. Cantor grabbed 30 rebounds. So let's just let that sink in for a second. That breaks the single game record of 28 set back in 1975 by Sidney Wicks. It's also the first time a player has pulled down 30 rebounds in a game since Dwight Howard did it back in 2018. I mean, I understand the 30 run, obviously, it's, it's a uh, very cool uh, accomplishment, accomplishment. But I think what made me more uh, happy and excited just to see my teammates cheering for me and, you know, just the, how, how happy and excited they were uh, for me. For him to, to come down with, with 30 rebounds is, is special. And I think it just shows his knack to his knack for just getting the ball, you know, just finding the ball off the glass. You know, he's, he's the best I've ever played with, with just finding a way to get the ball. Next up for the Blazers, Boston at home Tuesday night. Then they hit the road for a pair of games. They're in San Antonio Friday night and then in Charlotte next Sunday. That game's a makeup date. The teams were originally supposed to play back in February. Art after tonight, the Blazers have 19 games left in the shortened 72 game season. And the Boston Celtics, they were in Denver today. Uh, to face off with the Nuggets. That was their game earlier today. The Celtics have won seven of their last ten. This game was close for a while, and then Boston yes. scored a barrage of points in the fourth quarter. They went on a 31-8 run, and they take down the Nuggets 105-87, to a beatdown at Denver. Celtics, of course, are going to be at Moda Center on Tuesday. Next stop, Brittany's home state. We're talking Minneapolis. The Timberwolves hosting the Bulls. This game was really all about two Timberwolves. Carl Anthony Towns, a big cat. Damn. 27 points, 12 rebounds. He got some help from D'Angelo Russell, though. Russell chipped in with 27 points, hit a bunch of three-pointers. Minnesota was, old, was able to hold on him to beat the Bulls 121 to 117. So in Minnesota this weekend, everything on the court really kind of took a backseat to the drama 
surrounding the ownership. Oh yeah, Art, right, this is all over my news feed. Some real hot takes on this too. Owner Glenn Taylor has been talking about selling the franchise for years and it finally looks like he has a buyer. Yeah, that guy. Alex Rodriguez. According to The Athletic, Rodriguez and his business partner, Mark Laurie, are in negotiations to purchase the Timberwolves. Laurie is an investor who at one time was actually the CEO of Walmart. The report says they have 30 days to work out a deal with current owner Glenn Taylor. To say the Timberwolves are struggling is an understatement. Let's be real here. They are <laughs> tied for last in the league with just 14 wins. The deal would also include the WNBA's Minnesota Lynx, which in my you know, opinion might be the better deal. A-Rod must really want to own a sports franchise here. A few months back, he failed in a bid to buy the New York Mets. So, Brittany, you mentioned your uh, social media feed. What are people saying? Do they want this? Do they want A-Rod to be the man there in, in Minneapolis? I mean, it's an exciting topic, right? It's just something I think that's a big talker for a lot of people. Yeah. But I think there's also some concern there, especially when the Seattle talk comes into play. What's going to happen <laughs> to the Timberwolves if he right. takes over? Yeah, but you know, according to producer Craig, there's no way he's going back to Seattle because they don't want him there. <laughs> That's so true. So, that probably <laughs> won't happen. <laughs> oh, man. And, and you, you know what? We're going to talk a little college basketball now because this is turning into the silly season for college basketball. Lots of student athletes entering the transfer portal. They're looking for new playing opportunities. Women's teams at Oregon and Oregon State losing some serious talent. Ducks guard Taylor Chavez is leaving the program for the University of Arizona. She's from Surprise, Arizona, so it's not a big surprise that she would go to Arizona. She averaged just over four points, two assists in 19 minutes a game. She has two years of eligibility remaining. Another player leaving the Ducks program, Jazz Shelley. She's from Australia. She's going to lead the basketball team as well. She averaged four points, two assists per game this season. Shelley said that she decided she wanted to find a program that is a better fit for her talent. She's a really good three-point shooter, better her freshman year than her sophomore. The transfers hurt the Ducks' depth at guard. And then we have the Oregon State Beavers. They're losing a key player in their rotation transfer guard, Sasha Goforth. She wants to play at a school that is closer to her Arkansas home. Freshman started every game for the Beavers this season. She averaged just over 11 and a half points a game. And Goforth was named Pac-12 All-Freshman uh, uh, the All -freshman team for the 2021 season. And also over to Oregon State, the men's basketball coach Wayne Tinkle, he has parlayed the team's success in the NCAA tournament into a contract extension. By making it to the tournament, a year was added to his contract. That was automatically there. And then the school rewarded him with an additional three-year extension. So now he is under contract through the 2026-27 season. Tinkle led the Beavers to their first ever Pac-12 Conference Tournament Championship. They got to the Elite Eight of the NCAA Tournament for the first time since 1982. And they won 20 games for the first time since 2012. So it was a pretty good year. Well, of course, all this college basketball news comes less than a week after the Stanford women's basketball team won the NCAA championship. We caught up with Stanford freshman and Beaverton's own Cameron Brink, a very impressive young lady. Brink was one of Stanford's key players in the title game. She actually played high school basketball at Southridge and Mountainside and became one of the nation's top recruits. Playing for Stanford was much different than she could have imagined because of the pandemic. The team spent most of the season away from campus, putting Brink in a very challenging situation. We talked to her about how the team managed to get through the season. We just made it a point to lean on each other as much as possible, like through moving from state to state, hotel to hotel, like all we had was each other. So we made it a point that like we, we got each other, we, we're each other's home. And, um, you know, we're going to get through this, and we did. She's got a little time off from basketball, but soon she's going to start workouts to get ready for next season. Art, I have to say, it was so fun watching this these Oregon ties all oh, yeah. throughout the tournament. And when we talked to her and she was talking about just replaying that championship win right. over and over, I hope she continues to do that for years to come. Well, I think she will. You know, she was so excited about it. It was so much fun to get a chance to talk to her because she's just really excited about everything. And, you know, she works so hard at her game. It, it was really a difficult year for she and the rest of that team. I mean, I don't think they ever played a game on their campus. I don't, I'm, I don't mm. think that there was a, a time when they were able to be there. So it really was challenging. I asked her if any family members got to see her at the Final Four. She said, yep, her mom and dad came 
and her godmother, who happens to be Steph Curry's mom. So <laughs> she was there to stands with them. Uh, you know, her mom and Steph Curry's mom went to college together and, and at uh, Virginia Tech. So wow. they've known each other forever. But, you know, she's excited about getting back at it. She said, just a little time off, and then she's ready to, ready to start playing again. Can't wait to see her. <laughs> That's right. Hey, still to come tonight, did you see this? That's not really playing all that well with others. Man, a little chippiness as the Thorns get the season started. Four red cards in this match. How Portland was able to get a big win on Friday. Plus, since Brittany's here, uh, yeah, we've got to talk about the Packers. At least Aaron Rodgers talks his future in the form of a question. Welcome back. The Portland Timbers opened up their home season on Thursday. I'd rather on Tuesday they opened it up in the CONCACAF Champions League. The Timbers are going to be taking on Marathon in the home portion of their two-game series. The teams tied 2-2 in Honduras last week. Now the Timbers have something of an advantage right now because they were able to score those two goals on the road. Total goals wins the series and advance to the next round. The game is over at Providence Park and there are going to be some, some fans in the stands. Hey, the Portland Thorns, they were the ones to get back on the field first over at Providence Park. That was on Friday. First time the Thorns played in front of fans in 545 days. Thorns came through against Kansas City in the NWSL Challenge Cup. Portland built a 2-0 lead and then held on to win the game 2-1. Uh, Thorns are going to travel to face Chicago Red Stars on Thursday, but because of those red cards, they might miss a couple of players. Well, the Portland Winter Hawks wrapped up a four-game road trip on Saturday night in Spokane. It was a wild game against the Chiefs. Portland scored three times in the second period to take a 4-1 lead. Spokane managed to tie it in the third, and then Portland exploded for three straight goals early in the third period to take control. Spokane made it close, but the Winter Hawks hold on to take the game 7-6. The teams play each other on Wednesday night at Veterans Memorial Coliseum. The Winter Hawks are in second place in the U.S. division. But a 7-6 game for hockey. I'm from Minnesota, Art. That is the state of hockey, and I do and not see many games like that. No, no, they don't see many games like that either. That was a, that was a lot of fun when I was watching those highlights. I was like, whoa, look at this. It, it was great. Yeah. Winter Hawks are a lot of fun. Uh, what an awesome team to watch. <laughs> yes. Well, hey, still to come, the Ducks and Beavers battle it out on the Diamond. College basketball in full swing, or baseball, excuse me, of course in full swing the winner of this key series early in the Pac-12 season. Ground ball to shortstop. Kim will go to first. The San Diego Padres get their first no hitter in the history of the franchise and it belongs to San Diego's own Joe Musgrove sending the Friar faithful into a frenzy. <laughs> that call sent me into a frenzy. Joe Musgrove, he's the guy who threw the no-hitter. First one of the season on Friday and the first one in the history of the San Diego Padres. It was a 3-0 win over the Texas Rangers. Only one Ranger batter reached that base, and that was because he got hit by a pitch. Padres were the only team in Major League Baseball without a no-hitter. And that is your Toyota Sunday Sizzle. Hey, a little bit of rivalry action on the baseball diamond this weekend. The Ducks hosting the Beavers. Beavers look like they might salvage one game of the series. They were up 4-1 in the eighth when it all went bad. Jake Mahalan hits a batter right there to drive in the tying run in the bottom of the eighth. And then in the 11th, the Beavers commit an error to allow the winning run to score. The Ducks win it 5-4. They sweep the weekend series against the Beavers. The final round of the first major of golf major of the year in Augusta, Georgia today, Hideki Matsuyama uh, went into the final round with a four-stroke lead. He added to the lead and then looked like he was cruising until the 15th. He ends up in the water on the par five and his lead drops all the way down to one stroke. But nobody could take advantage of that. Matsuyama is able to win the Masters, finishing at 10 under par. He is the first Japanese man to win a PGA major. Will Zatoris finished second, one shot back. All right, so Art, not to interrupt here, interrupt here, but you know, it's way past my bedtime, and we have right. not yet 
talked anything about the Packers. What's that all about? You know, I was trying to stay away with away from it, but there must be something new with the Packers. Yeah, I won't talk about Packers, maybe just <laughs> singular one Packer one. in particular. All I'm right. glad you asked here. Not only is Aaron Rodgers America's hero, of course, and <laughs> the best quarterback ever, right? He's also smarter than most of us, and he got to prove that this week hosting Jeopardy. Rodgers is a former celebrity Jeopardy champion, and he's the latest person to be guest host of the show following the passing of Alex Trebek. And get this, a contestant actually trolled the NFL star on Final Jeopardy, criticizing the Packers for kicking a field goal during a key moment of last year's NFC Championship game against the eventual champion Buccaneers. That one stung a little bit, but Roger is so classy. He handled it so well. The three-time MVP called hosting Jeopardy a dream gig. He said he wouldn't mind having the job full-time down the road, but he's, of course, got to take the Packers to another Super Bowl first. We're counting on that. I don't want him getting too comfortable right. hosting Jeopardy. Not going to happen. Go to Jeopardy now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we need him. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, Brittany, thanks a lot for joining us. We really loved having you here. Talk too much Packers, so we've got to get out of here. <laughs> Time for the plays of the week. Checked by Allen. Stasby with another attempt. Scores!